pebbles. Goddamn pebbles. Why do we put you here? Anyway. Thomas, have you hurt your leg? Oh no. No, okay. I'm just doing a video. Oh, I'm so sorry if I interrupted. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, it's all right. It's fine. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Because I saw you sort of limp when I first were, I saw you limping across the uh, uh, across the garden. You see, and I thought, oh, it's Thomas sprained his ankle or something. No, I was I was just doing it for comedic value for the uh, for the video. So what, what have I interrupted? What do you have to do now? Start again? No, it's okay. Like I, I edit, edit the videos and stuff anyway. So it's... Oh, as long as you haven't sprained your ankle. Already. No, I'm okay. All right, then. <laughs> she's, uh, she's my neighbour next door. Lovely lady. Um, obviously can't go out that much during the all the whole COVID isolation scenario. Um, so obviously it's a bit difficult on all of us. Um, even more so for people who are a bit older. Um, but yeah, she's she's doing all right. Um, and I'm doing okay, of course, which is probably what I should lead with. Um, it has been very difficult these past few weeks. I had a really good routine. I had my work, I had my boxing, I had my writing. I had lots of stuff that I was doing and I had a good routine set up to put out videos and do podcasts alongside with all of the other stuff that I'm doing. And this whole COVID thing, it's really, really messed up my routine. I feel like most people, when this kind of stuff happens, they would deduct all the things that they can't do, like no work, no boxing, other stuff, you can still do it, right? Well, in my brain, and I'm sure a lot of you can empathize with this, it's it's not like that. It destroyed my routine. I had to build it back up slowly from the start. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you today about. Firstly about, you know, COVID and, and all that. And I know there's loads of videos out there on COVID in the media and on YouTube. And to be honest, it's kind of getting on my nut a little bit on the old brain. It's annoying me. I know it's COVID. Everyone knows. Everyone knows it's isolation. We don't need to keep talking about it, but I'm talking about it today. Um, if that's the, not the most cognitive dissonancy-like thing that I could do in this situation. So yes, I'm in my backyard shooting a video on my new camera. And you've probably seen my new camera in that last Easter video that I uploaded. Uh, not that that's really relevant right now because I'm mainly putting this video out, as I said, firstly, to talk about COVID. Secondly, about the documentary, the Asperger's Growth in Society documentary. The one that I've been hyping up for the past few weeks. The thing is, is that I've had a little bit of correspondence with the university. Obviously, I did the documentary as part of my final year project, which basically means that I filmed it for university, and then they've allowed me to put it on my social media, on my YouTube. But what I, what I didn't expect when I was sort of emailing people to try and promote the documentary was that the public relations, the media relations team for the university got in contact with me and asked me to have a call and we chatted about a few things and he basically said that if I was willing to sort of put off releasing the documentary um, for now, maybe give it a couple of weeks, three weeks at the max, then they would help me do a whole sort of media PR campaign for the documentary. And it, it really, it really upset me in some respects because I like to get things out as I say they're gonna be out. I like to to do things and I like to make sure that I'm keeping your best interests in mind because you guys are the channel, you know. And it's it's hard. And it's it's really an opportunity that doesn't come around a lot. It, I'm I will 
there's not many opportunities where a big university is going to put their time in to try and promote um, something about autism. And the whole documentary, the whole meaning behind the documentary is that I want people to know about it. It's all well and good putting it out for autistic people and, and you know, it's, it's usually a good source of, of inspiration or a good source of relatability for autistic people. But it's not going to change anything unless it's in the mainstream media. And that's, that's the thing that I'm really struggling to tap into until, obviously, the media relations team's got in, got in contact with me. So as of now, I am, I've put back the documentary trailer, uh, not the trailer, I've put back the full documentary for um, a couple of weeks in advance. Realistically, I'm not sure when it's going to be coming out. I have released the documentary on my Patreon group on Facebook, as I said that I would. Um, but in terms of public release, I don't think it's going to be out um, anytime soon within within a week or so. It's not it's not going to happen for a, a few weeks to come, and. I, do, I am genuinely sorry that it hasn't been released. It's not going to be released on Friday because I did. I know I did say that it was going to be. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a good step and it could at the least help build the channel. Help get a bit more publicity. Maybe if it gets a lot of publicity, I'll be able to start making videos for a living. Who knows? Probably not. And at the most it's going to be a catalyst for social change at the most which is way up there on the on the important scale in terms of my goal raising mental health awareness for autistic people something needs to be done about it and that's the whole reason why I started the documentary it's the whole reason why I get up in the morning make videos I want to try and improve the lives of autistic people like yourself like your, your par not your parents, like your children, people you work with, your friends, your partner. That's what I want to do. And this way of doing it, this, camp this PR campaign, seems to be the most viable option for achieving that goal. Um, but, as I said, I hope, I hope you guys are doing okay. I know it can be absolutely horrific trying to adjust these routine changes to these routine changes um, it, it is it is good that the government's you know put out a, a notice saying that the autistic people can get out a bit more than often maybe go to some more remote locations and have have more uh, opportunities to exercise and stuff and that's all all well and good and I'm really happy that the government has considered that when they were thinking about isolation because I feel like it's really important especially for kids and, and teenagers to get that, that aspect and even even for autistic adults emotional regulation exercise, being out in nature it's good for your mental health it's good for your emotional regulation important things um, obviously there's going to be a lot of media related things to deal with COVID and it may just feel uh, you may feel like I do and just want nothing to do with it. You don't want to hear about it. You know it's going on. You know you're going to have to be inside. You're just waiting for that green light to start normal life again. And I completely get that. I feel exactly the same. And so <laughs> I hope that my inclusion of COVID in the title isn't going to put any of you off. But I suppose there's no point in me mentioning it now because you probably didn't click on it. Um, yeah. Please let me know how you are doing in the comments. And obviously, if you are alone and you're on your own and you need someone to talk to, like, I've got a lot of free time on my hands. I may be doing a lot of blog posts and promotional stuff for my documentary and working on the podcast, but my inbox is always open. And whilst I may not reply instantly, give me a couple of days and I will definitely reply to you and you know I, I really do care about all of you and and hope that you're 
able to to deal with this effectively and if if you if you can't and if you do need some help i'm always here to offer you some advice or give you a bit of emotional support whether it's share my own experiences i will do that for you during this time and um yeah thank you for watching this video uh, i know this is probably going to be a lot of youtube videos coming out so i'm very thankful that you have decided to click on this one Bloody eight insects. You can still hear it. Right, I better go. Um, my foot is starting to go numb from all these pebbles that my mum has brilliantly decided to scatter across the garden. Um, as I said, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to releasing this documentary. Thank you so much for being a part of my channel and joining me on this journey. This could be the big break that we need to get all of this stuff heard about, to get the awareness out. And it's all down to you guys for supporting me and my, and my talking on a camera or talking on a microphone. It's all down to you, so thank you. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna put shoes on.